is Jonathan here with Vapor Honing Technologies again. Uh, today I want to cover real quickly what abrasives can be used in a wet blasting or vapor blasting machine. And that question is very simple and very easy. Any abrasive that's used in a dry blast system can be used in a wet blast system. Uh, you have to think about application. Again, it's all application specific. It's all you know, what do you want your final outcome or end result to be? Um, if you're stripping paint, you could use a crushed glass, you could use silicon carbide, you could use aluminum oxide. And the reason for that, and I'm going to put a picture up on the screen for you to see the aluminum oxide particles at a highly magnified image from a scanned electron microscope, you're going to see the sharp edge profile on that abrasive. And again, this is aluminum oxide, but it, it holds true for silicon carbide and crushed glass. Um, the sharp edge profile does one thing for us. It allows you to cut, to cut debris and contaminants off the surface very quickly. When it's riding along the top of the surface in the water, it's, imagine, it's etching with that sharp edge. Uh, so it's, it's, it's etching that surface, so it's cutting and removing anything that's on the surface, any contaminant, any paint, any powder coat. So that's what those sharp edged abrasives are good for. Not only are they sharp edged, but they're really hard. Uh, specifically silicon carbide and aluminum oxide. Those are like a 9.2 on Mohs hardness scale. Um, so they're really hard, they're really durable, they're not going to hit and break when they hit the surface. Um, I mean of course depending on what the surface is, if it's aluminum or brass, it's just going to hit and remove material because again the abrasive is much harder than the surface. Uh, so that's for cutting very quick cutting. Again, any abrasive used in a dry blast system can be used in a wet blast. Um, the second abrasive that you could use potentially is a glass bead. Uh, depending on what you're trying to do with that glass bead depends on the size. If you're doing some sort of wet shot painting, you may be using a large glass bead versus a small glass bead. If you're doing restoration work, whether it's automotive, motorcycle, then you're going to be using a very fine mesh glass bead. And that's what we always recommend here. Um, that fine mesh glass bead is going to give you a very beautiful lustrous part, a very beautiful finish on that piece. And that's what we recommend for, uh, for restoration. And the reason for that, again, is the glass bead is a sphere. It's a circle. I'll put the image up on the screen for you to see. Um, but what's gonna, you can imagine what's taking place when it's running across the surface of the part, the bead is just rolling and tumbling. It's not etching like aluminum oxides would. Um, it's just rolling across the part, so it's lapping the surface. Again, finer abrasives, brighter finish. And the reason for that is decreased surface roughness. The part is not being roughened as much with the fine abrasive which means the, the surface is smoother, which means light reflects back at your face easier. Think about it, if the surface is, if the surface looks like this multiple or thousands of times, think about the light. The light can reflect that way and the light can reflect that way. There are many different areas on a rough surface the light can reflect from, so it's not going to be as bright and in your face as a polished, smooth surface. The next abrasive, moving on, could be a soda or an Armex soda blast. <clears throat> you guys might watch the videos a couple weeks or a couple days ago. We still actually have Armex soda in the machine right now. And we're doing some demonstrations, we're doing some trial processing. And soda is really good for any automotive remanufacturing application. Whether you're cleaning cylinder heads, whether you're cleaning transmission cases, uh, or if you're in the restoration rebuild markets, and you just don't want to use any abrasive anywhere near your engines, then this is a great cleaning process for you. It's not going to give you a surface finish because the abrasive is too soft and too friable and it has no smooth round edge. Um, again, it's too soft and friable. That's the number one disadvantage that it has. If it hits the surface, it can just explode. Um, hence why dry soda blasting is so expensive and consume so much abrasive because it hits the surface one and done and it's gone. And here, it hits the surface but not as hard. So it's not going to explode as quickly. But this is a good cleaning agent. 
Uh, this is what I would always recommend if you're skeptical and afraid of abrasive in your engine and you just want to clean parts. Uh, it does a super great job at cleaning parts very quickly. I'll throw a, a video up on the screen here so you can see it cleaning parts with the soda. But again, very fast and very easy. Um, moving on after that, uh, you might want to use a crushed glass. I know we talked about that earlier. Silicon carbides, uh, ceramic bead, that's another one. Uh, that one comes back into wet shop heating applications as well because again, the ceramic is round, but it's more dense and it's heavier than glass beads. So they can actually get a more intense shot paint on the surface with ceramic bead. Uh, again, it's going to be traveling with much more force than glass bead and it can hit the surface a lot easier than a hollow glass bead sphere. Uh, but I hope that helps. Those are some of the abrasives that you use. Those are some of the most common ones that we use throughout all the industries. Uh, if you have an application that you're concerned about, give us a call or shoot us an email and we can walk you through the trial processing steps or maybe we can troubleshoot some things and figure out what you need uh, based on our conversation together. So uh, thanks for watching and I hope you found this informative.